everybody, welcome back to Alan Wall's Photography. I am Alan and today we're going to address one of the most common problems in uh, high magnification macro photography and that is how to get around short working distances with your lighting. The best place to start is by describing the problem. When you're working with microscope objectives, you're working with optical equipment that has been designed uh, to work at short working distances. Normally your microscope objective is on the end of a microscope tube that, or a tube lens and your, your uh, specimen is placed 15, 20 millimeters away from the end of the objective. So close, in fact, that most, um, most microscope objectives will also give you the thickness of the glass cover slip that goes over your specimen so that you can take that into consideration um, when, you're, when you're setting up your system. That doesn't leave much room for light. In microscopy, the light is coming from below and it's going right through the specimen. So when you're looking at a microscope slide, you're, you're looking at light that's being projected through the specimen and straight up into the, to the microscope. With 3D objects, like insects, for example, that you can't see through, even small ones you can't see through usually, uh, we have a different set of problems because we can't use light that's being transmitted through. We have to use light that's being reflected off our specimen. And how do you get light to reflect off a specimen mere millimeters in front of the lens and bounce back uh, to be collected by your optical system? And that's what we have to overcome. And uh, there are many, many ways that you can do that. I want to show you the way I have found to be most useful. And uh, there are a few variations on that. I use a lot of different arrangements for my uh, macro photography, especially for my high magnification stuff. But most typically, it consists of this, which is the Nikon PB6 Bellows, uh, which you can buy used um, on eBay without any difficulty. Um, a crop frame DSLR camera, that one that's recording this right now. Um, and the lens, whatever I'm gonna use. In this case, I have uh, a standard uh, 50 millimeter Nikkor enlarger lens. Um, mounted directly onto the bellows in the correct orientation. This is a very sharp, very good lens for this kind of photography. It's all sitting on the PB6 bellows. The bellows is mounted to a really right stuff um, quick release plate, which is mounted to my focus rail, which is a Cognosys stack shot, the long base version. So for most of my high magnification work, I'm gonna be using a microscope objective and it's either gonna be mounted on a set of extension tubes or pre my preference is to mount it on a bellows because I can adjust the length of the microscope tube very easily uh, and change objectives and not have to worry about setting up an entirely new system. So, this is uh, pertinent to finite objectives like the Amscope 4X objective we're using in this case. The issue is when the microscope objective is mounted to the bellows, like so, the working distance is going to be about that far. I don't know if you can clearly see that, but you're talking about maybe 16, 10 to 16 millimeters, maybe a little bit longer. One thing that you can do is remove the nose piece, gives you a little bit more room and a little bit of a narrower objective turret right here at the end. 
The reason I don't do this is removing this increases the chance of getting lens flare from any light that gets bounced down in here. This extra two millimeters makes quite a bit of difference. So how are we gonna get our light into this little gap? There are three primary, well, four if you count the light source, four primary elements involved in lighting at a short working distance. The first is the light source. Usually it'll be one or two speed lights with some type of diffusion. I, would, I couldn't see that a minute ago. This is my, my go-to device. We talked all about how to make these things and there's a video on my channel to show you how to do it. But this both directs and diffuses the lights. It has a double layer of tracing paper at the top. I like to keep my lighting as uncomplicated as possible. So I'll often shoot with just one light. Element number one is a diffused light source, flash, studio light, whatever you've got, but something that you can position. Normally, of course, I'd be using my macro cage, but I wanted all this out of the cage so you could see everything more clearly. I will place a light source more often than not above, down onto my specimen. The second element is a series of reflectors. Now, I use this silver card. I don't really know what it's made for, um, but it is shiny on one side, white on the other, and that's important. It's also bendy, so you can, you can form shapes with it that will pretty much stay in position. Now, the reason I use this stuff is because of the fact that I can shape it to work almost like a section of a parabola. Uh, by that I mean I can position my light above or to the side of my specimen, and then I can use one of these either on the white side or the silver side, that would be it set up to work on the white side, to direct the light from my light source back up into the specimen. I don't wanna move it too far in this direction and start reflecting light down onto the objective because that's where I'll get lens flare. And I can position these anywhere, including over the top, to direct the light back down. Now I use these larger reflectors as, uh, as a field light, meaning I want this to illuminate the whole of my specimen in addition to the direct light from the flash, the light bouncing back will give a field illumination. But there's another piece and that is these little things that I make. These are pieces of the same material that are cut out into little round or little square shapes. It doesn't really make any difference. Uh, and this one I've modified by cutting tongues out of the material. And the reason is I use these to specifically place them around my objective and which I hold in place, by the way, with, with an elastic band. But depending on the size and the shape and the way I angle it, I can take the light that is being bounced back up off my primary reflector, silver or white, or some other color if I want an effect, and it, I can use these smaller, and I sometimes use really tiny ones of these, I don't have any tiny ones uh, out right now, but I can use these to give me specular highlights where I want them on my specimen. So that would be uh, the first three elements, the flash, the field reflector, and the uh, point reflector or the detail reflector. The final piece, is rolls of tracing paper. 
which are simply pieces of high quality tracing paper rolled in a cylinder, sticky taped together and positioned like so. I usually use them to cover the entire specimen. Normally when I'm using one of these, I will use my quad hands, the thing we talked about on many occasions before. I'm gonna to have to be careful with this because it's got a specimen on it, but hopefully you can see that. That's my quad hands. It's got a, it's got a deceased crane fly on the end, which is what we're gonna photograph in a minute. But I can use one or two of these arms to position my paper tube right over the specimen all the way back to the bellows if necessary, uh, leaving enough room for the assembly to move when I'm taking my shots. But this is uh, incredibly useful for creating a softer, more uniform light because not only does it diffuse the light that's coming in directionally, but it also internally reflects the light and shines uh, flash into all the nooks and crannies. The flash is usually set on about 1 64th, which sounds probably like a lot of flash for something so small and so close. But it won't be. Once my specimen is positioned and I've checked the positioning uh, on the camera, I will take my tube, I'll clip it to my magical arm assembly. I'll get it positioned and I've there's a there's a there's a cut in the bottom of that. I don't know if you can see it, but it's about a millimeter wide. And what I'll do is very carefully, without touching the pin, I'll advance the tube right over the specimen, just like that. Then I'll take one, two, or three pieces of white card or uh, silver card or black card if I want to uh, darken an area and I will position the reflectors right where I want them. Like in this case, I want some light coming up from below. And this is just practice. You just know where to put the, the reflectors to get the effect that you're looking for. I might also add one here. This is really the secret to, um, uh, to lighting the front of the subject when you have um, when you have so little space to work with is these little reflectors. Sometimes I will cut a lip out of them so that they'll fit right under the objective, which is a cool way to do it. Other times I use these little bendy feet so that I can stick a piece of sticky tape on it and position it there. For the sake of this demonstration, seeing as I've run out of bendy arms, I'm just gonna hold it for now. Uh, and then all I do is um, shoot a test shot. The fly hasn't moved at all. So I'm shooting one 250th of a second, an ISO of 100. And of course, I'm shooting at a fixed aperture of the equivalent of F20. This has a, a numerical aperture of 0 0.1. Now you're gonna hear me press the shutter twice. That's because I have my camera set up and my focus stacking rail um, programmed to take two shots at each stop. The first one is to raise the mirror and then it's gonna pause long enough for, the, uh, for any vibrations to die down. Then it'll fire the shutter again, which will take the picture and fire the flash. Then it'll move to the next location and pause for about 200 microseconds when it gets there. Uh, to settle down again. So all of that's programmed into the rail. So I don't need to do anything other than set my focus. A neat trick, well, it's actually mandatory. If you're doing this kind of photography, have a powerful flashlight that you can illuminate 
your specimen with just to decide where your where your um, focus needs to start and finish. I'm going to move the camera and the objective until the nearest point is just out of focus. That looks good. I'll select that. Then I will move the then I will move the camera forward until the last part that I'm interested in is just out of focus on the other side and then I'll select that. I've got the um, the distance set at 100 microns, which is kind of big steps for me, but that's okay. This is a demonstration. I'll show you how it works. So that, my friends, is all there is to it. One light, one uh, diffusion tube, and as many tiny silver mirrors or reflectors as you think you need and just experiment. This is no different than being in the studio with a model and trying different reflectors from different angles to get just the light that you want. This is exactly the same. It's just our models like to eat doo-doo and they're about a millimeter long. Other than that, they're exactly the same as models. All right, enough of this nonsense. Let me clean this mess up. That's all I have for you today. This was rather a last minute thing, uh, but I ha did have an idea while I was making this video and I'm very mindful of the fact that a lot of people are spending a lot more time at home than they usually do. And uh, I had this idea, I've never done it, uh, so technically I don't know how to do it, so I'll have to, to look it up. But if anybody was interested in doing a, a live session, a get together where we could chat and uh, uh, ask questions and, and interact live like that, I would be happy to figure out how to do it and set that up. I know it can be done on YouTube. So if you are interested in doing a live program, please leave me a message in the comments and I will, and when you do, tell me about what time of day would make the most sense for you. I know a lot of you are probably working from home, which is great. Uh, but uh, yeah, and if you're not interested, don't worry about it. It's uh, it was it was just a thought. So here are your instructions until I see you again. Number one, uh, either like this video or subscribe to the channel or do both, but you can't do neither. <laughs> Second, avoid viruses. Three don't spread viruses. So if your local people are telling you to stay put, stay put. I'm staying put. We should all stay put. That's it. Just three things you've got to do. No viruses in, no viruses out, and like the video. I'll see you in a few days. I'm only going to get progressively less sane. So it um, could be fun could be fun. All right, take care.